We begin the current daf Masechtes Ksubis daf Lametes. Begin on the bottom of Lametes and Mebeis, six lines up from the bottom of the Amid. But the Gemara continues in the related discussion of the previous daf, which we're discussing over here. The this parak Eilu Nairis. <coughs> we talk, we're talking about the halachas of Oynes Mafata. So in the previous mission we spoke about if a Nara, what happens if her status changes? If she's a Sarsa and the Skarsha, so what would happen? Does she get a knas? Uh, if, if there is a knas, does it go to her? Does it go to her father? That was the discussion on the previous stuff, and that's how Gemara discusses now. Uh, also, a different type of a case. What happens after the case of the Inus Mafata? Does it change regarding the liability of the Ma'anus or the Mafata regarding uh, the payment? This corresponds to the Kazi. The Kazi could turn to the Bacham Shem Jung of today's daf. Some discussions discussing today's daf are just the basic ages, uh, which relates to the halachas that we're discussing is Kitana, the girl under the age of 12. Is Naira between 12 and 12 and a half, which we showed, uh, showed signs of maturity, such as Shtay Cyrus, and that's for a period of six months. That's, and then that takes you to Begaris, which are older than 12 and a half, which are shown uh, signs of further maturity. The next mission discusses the, the difference between uh, Oynas and Mafata. Mafata has three payments. If he seduces her, he has to pay for her embarrassment, Pagam, which is her deficiency now that regarding that she's not a Basula anymore, and because of what happened, and Knaz, is the biblical penalty. Ainus has four, adds on that of Tsar, the pain of the what happens by the rape. So we begin the current daf, the Lamed Chesma Beis, six lines up in the bottom of the Yom. Omar Baya. Baya says like this. He says, what happens if Baal Leha, let's say he, vi- he, 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 he violates the girl, he's Ma'anasa, and the father doesn't get a chance to take the rapist to court until the Mesa, his daughter dies. So actually, the Allah is putter, and Ma'an is actually exempt. Why? Remember, the Pasuk says in the bottom, the Nasan, the man who laid with her, is going to give la'avi ha'nara to the father of the Nara, of the girl, which teaches us, mesa, not to the father of the dead girl. So from avi ha'nara, we learn out that when he's giving it to her, the Nasina, the Hamad Bedin, has to be that the girl is still alive. That's Abaya's teaching. Now, it says the Gemara, most of the Pshitle Labaya, what was so obvious to Abaya, it, which that there's no knas by a dead girl is actually the boiler the rub as a question for Rabba. Now we're only going to see it at the conclusion on the on the next Ahmed that the way Mabar Abashi explains Rabba's question that that's what's Milsa the Pshita is is Rabba, is Rabba's question. But first the Gemara starts off a first version. The boiler Rabba because Rabba had the following question: Yes, begi bekever, is there a halacha of bagrus of maturity in the grave? Meaning. Let's say a girl died when she was still a Naira, but she, she, she had just turned uh, just a month or two into her Nairis, until there wasn't yet a court case. Then she became the age that she would have been, let's say 12 and a half, in the grave. Is that considered that she became a Bagetis? Or in Begabekever, or do you say that no, you can't become a Bagetis in the grave? Jamal now is going to explain exactly what halacha are we asking the question. First, the Gemara understands it as follows. Yes, beg Do we say that a girl could become a Bagetis in the grave? And that is just like that if, let's say, they had not had a chance to have a court case until she becomes a Bagetis. A Mishnah later on, Perikanarshan is about that Malvin Bay's teaches. Then it goes to her and not to her father because now she's already independent. She's already 12 and a half. So now also you would say that she becomes a Bagetis in the grave because now she's in her age would have been. 12 and a half. So that removes the, the, the authority of the father. And actually with the Benab, her son inherits her if she has a son, because it's now hers, and now her inheritors, who's her son, gets it. How does she have a son? Oh, so that's what the is going to discuss. in Begab Begab, or maybe that, no, you can't become a Begedis in the grave. And you like freeze in time. You're still a Naira. Or the Vihab, it's the father's, even though he didn't take the, the rapist to court yet, when he does, he's a shtip, he's a procrastinator, he'll get him two years from now. Elavai said, it's a schus that he got, because this was, she died when she was in Naira, and therefore it's going to be the father. That was the question that Rabbi had asked. But, as we continue to Malam Tesman out there, someone just brought up, the Gemara says, Omima Abra? What do you mean? Could she have become pregnant when she was a minor or a Naira, when she was eligible for the age of Kanas? that you tell me she gave birth when she's a Naira and she died before she became Begedis, and now you tell me could she become Begedis in the grave 
And the ramification you want me to know is that because now that she's a Megiddos and the father didn't yet take it to court that her son is going to inherit, not the father, could she even become pregnant to say that she had a child? But we're telling you, we become a Jerem Nachman, and he taught the following b'risa. Shalosh Nashim Meshamshiz B'meich, which are very important, Machlekes, regarding um, preventing conception, Rashi Taisis, the way Rashi explains it is, it, is it, uh, that these three women are permitted to utilize uh, some form of of um, avoiding conception, and uh, they could use some type of a, a condom, some type of a, a, a cloth, and it's not considered a problem about destroying seed. Um, on that, the taste brings that why should that be a problem? It's no different than having beer with a minor or an illness to be let up tashmash, like I said, hashkos is zero, it's in there tashmash. So rather, no, it's actually Rabbi Tom explains that. No, they, they have to, you know, it's, it's considered, it's a type of Kamash that uh, it's just a good idea because these three situations could be dangerous. So we want you, we actually are, are advocating of the utilization of a moich. But that's a discussion in Texas regarding is there problem Ashkos there or not, which obviously <coughs> is a big discussion regarding um, using other types of uh, birth control. But be that as it may, the three women that utilize a moich, Moich is just a term for a cloth, a rag, something that, that is used to prevent the, the woman from conceiving. And Elihan, the three women are Katana, a minor, Uma Beres, a pregnant woman, Uma Niken, a nursing woman. What's the reason that these three women use a Moich? So it's Katana, a minor, Shemit Thomas, because if she becomes pregnant, she might become pregnant. If she becomes pregnant, she's going to die. So we obviously don't want her to become pregnant. So she's allowed to use some form of birth control. Mubadas, a pregnant woman, Shemitasa Ubrasandl. What might happen if she becomes pregnant, the second fetus might push, and this actually happens sometimes when, the, when people are expecting twins, that one twin might actually push away the form of the first one, and one of them will, will, will not survive. So in Talmudic times, it could actually happen that a woman could actually become pregnant in her pregnancy a second time, and the second fetus pushes away the form of the first one, and it, it appears to be like a sandal, which is a type of a, a, a mammal in the, in the sea. So we're, we're concerned. We don't want them to become pregnant because it might, uh, this might harm the, the first fetus. And Anika, a nursing woman, is, the reason why she uses some form of contraception is Shabbatigbalas Beno. Because what happens is, when a woman becomes pregnant, um, the milk is going to uh, congeal and it's not going to be good for nursing, and she's going to have to remove the, her baby from her breast, and the baby's going to die, because the baby's not going to have any sustenance. So therefore, when she's nursing, we, we don't want her to become pregnant. So these three women are mishamshes, they do tashmish with a moich. Now, bezer gitana, and what's considered a minor, is mebas achas eser shonu b'yamechad. It's from 11 years old, ad shtei meser until 12. Uh, ad shtei meser shonu b'yamechad until 12 years old. Now, why from 11 to 12? Because Pachis became less than 11 years old. She could have Tashmish her regular way. She doesn't have to use any kind of contraception because she's not becoming pregnant. The yes came at more than 12. Is Meshemesh Kedak of Alechah. She also could do Tashmish her regular way because if she becomes pregnant, she's not going to die. That's the Bermeir. Chamem, they say to say, no, Achazu Achazu, whether if she's under 11 or over 11, Meshemesh is Kedak of Alechah. She could have Tashmish in the regular way. From heaven, they'll have mercy. Bishop Shinnok is like he says in Pasuk Dillam, Shoyim and Besarim Hashem, Hashem watches over the fools. But one thing says the Gemara is, we said that when she's a minor, she's not becoming pregnant. We're, and even if the time that she might become pregnant, which is between 11 and 12, she's also not, because she's not going to survive. She's going to be the Thomas. Or like the Chum say, okay, either way, the Hashem will make sure that they're going to become pregnant. But the question essentially is, you told me your question is, yes, Bega Bekever, ain't Bega Bekever. When she died between 12 and 12 and a half, when she was raped, when she was, depending on like the Chamu Rameh, or let's say when she just turned Bas Mitzah, 12, 12 years old, and now she died, and you want to know, what's with her son? What, what son? Well, how could he inherit? There's no son. Because you can't even have a child as a minor. So, Mechidim are going to say, oh yeah, no problem, the Abba Kashinara, Toma, we right when she turned 12, when she reached the, age, uh, the stage of Nairus, she became pregnant. But Lady Kashinara, and she gave birth when she's in Naira. So, let's say you hold like a Chum, let's say that, uh, 
the you could you could the halach of oynus is even as a ketan. So at ten years old, she was violated by this guy. The father never took this guy to court. And then when she turned twelve, she she got married. She had a baby during her days of nairus, and she died as a naira. And like, like we're asking, so the father had this horse in that. But but the question is, she became a begettus. She became a begettus at some point um, when she was in the grave. So that's that question: Does her child inherit her or not? So you think, well, that's also not possible because you think she can give birth in six months, which that's, that's, uh, the smallest is at least a little bit over six months. She can't give birth in six months. Now, said, the gap between Nairis and Bagris is only six months, which Rashi explains, meaning from when she brings two pubic kids, she's a Naira, and from if she brings the two pubic kids from age 12 and up, and from when she brings the pubic kids until she becomes a a period of six months and not more. And I, the price has said, the age of 12 and up, if she becomes pregnant, she's not gonna die. That's if you brought two pubic kids before she became pregnant, but as long as she actually didn't bring, she actually could tan them. I, why do you say the years? That's because less than 12 years old, even if she brought two pubic kids, it's only like a, like a shuma. It's just more like a birthmark, like the Gemara says, need them, you can do it. But like upon them, the period of Nairus and Bagris is, is six months. You tell me you're only able to have a child after you become a Naira. So it's impossible that, that she died with having a child before, before she becomes a begettus. Because she could only conceive after 12. And she's already begettus six months later. And she's not having a baby less than six months. So how can you tell me that the qu question you want to know is would the father be able to collect for her knas? <laughs> You want to know if she, or her son should get it, if she's Bagetis Bekev, it's not possible for her to become Bagetis in the grave. And Mechitim would be to say, no, 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 Basu would let go. When, when Shmuel said there's, there's no difference between Nice and Bagetis but six months, he just meant it's not less than six months. Hatzvei Ekam, it could be more than six months. I mean, maybe you don't become Bagetis to like a, a year later, possibly. But Ha El Kamai says, Ella, only. Not more, not less. So the Gemara says, you're right, the, question, the version of the question we had originally said is not, is not true, because you can't have a beg of a keber to, for her son. There's no son in that case. The question was as follows. Yes, beg of a keber, do we say that the girl is, so to speak, becoming a begaris now in the grave, and removes the father's claim? In other words, that the, the rapist gets to keep the mummies, because his litigant is not around. Because knas is not monies to bequeath for the to the father, because like even if she doesn't have a son, but the father is a shayarsh and his daughter. No, there's no terrorist yerusha on knas as long as it wasn't collected yet. It's only by mum that you have a yerusha. Knas is not something you yarsh. So do we say that she becomes a begaris in the grave and therefore it removes the father's his own direct right? And then it goes to her, but she's not alive and she doesn't have a son and the father cannot yarsh I don't know, maybe no in Bagabi Kabra. Maybe that there's no Bagabis in the grave. So that does not remove the father's claim. And the Philip Poka, if the father is not removed from the picture, maybe he could still go ahead and claim that was the question of Rav. Now there's no discussion on whether a child can have a baby or not. Even if let's say she could, this is obviously only according to the Kakun, right? That um, yeah, that that what happened, yeah. That would be before right. That right, that would be right. Or, yeah, or it would happen that day, yeah, or whatever, the, the mamash that same day, and right after, it could be by Naira, yeah. Now, he asked a question like this, uh, as we're going to say, it's actually his version that we wanted to say originally that what's Nusuf Shidla Bay is Boyle Rabba. He says, no, Rabba's question was not because of Begi Bekever. Because if you hold yes, Begi Bekever, you're assuming that it's obvious that there is Knas. For a girl who's dead, and then you just want to know. However, but she becomes a begettus. Would that would that change things? No. According to him, the question was as follows: Misa, if she dies when she's a naira, oisa bagris. Does death make bagris? What does that mean? Does it make bagris? Does it remove the father's ability? Just like when she's alive and she becomes a begettus, when she becomes a begettus, now she's her own woman. She collects. Whatever rights are are are, are owed to her, or ain't or bagris, or maybe it does not make the same equivalency of the din of bagris. That was the question. Does, does is that a finality 
excluding the father, just like Bagus ruins of the picture, does death do the same thing? Oh, so Rashi explains, it's this version of Mabra Vashi according to Rabbah, that's the Gemara we start off the daf by saying, Nusib Shid Labaya, it's obvious to Abaya, that's, that was what Meboi Le Rabbah was Rabbah asking the question. Because that's exactly the point. Rav Abai's teaching was Bo'ala or Mesa Pata. Why? Because the Nusla Bi'anad, the Nusla Bi'an Mesa has to, she has to be alive. Rav was asking, according to Mabra Vashi, when she dies, does that remove the father from the picture? Because now she's dead. Just like by Bagrish removes him from the picture. That was exactly what Abai's teaching was that Rav is asking. Because like Rashi explains, according to the first version we had of Rav, it's actually not Mibayla the Rav, it's Pshitta to Rav, the opposite of Abaya. That Misa does not remove the father. Because as long as she does not become a Begedis, that wasn't Rav's question. His whole question was, when she becomes a Begedis, in the grave, does that remove the father or not? But by death itself, as long as she does not become a Begedis, Rav clearly disagrees with Abaya and says, it would not remove the father. And the rapist would be chayib to the father. The question was, now that she, on the biological clock, she would have been 12 and a half now, oh, boom, she's Begedis, in the grave, would that remove the father? That's obvious, inherently saying that by her death alone, did not remove the father. So that version would not be mipoy le lerava. That would be pshita not like Abayah. It's only the second version of Mabaravashi who was saying that if does bagres make does misa make bagres, meaning to say does it remove the father by death, just like bagres. That was the question that Rava is going to be a milsulip shitle la bayah. And I think once let's take a little stand. It's not clear according to Rava. Uh, at least this version, what the halacha would be if Misa is a or not. Now, related, related to the halacha of our Mishnah, of Ms. Arsa, of Ms. Garsha, so the Bhaymane Rabbi Mabai, Rabbi asked from Abai in the following case, if the man uh, violates this woman, then this Arsa, and then she gets engaged. Ma, what's the halacha? What's the question? Does it go to her father or does it go to her? So Malay says, what do you mean? Mixib does the same the Pasik of Naslan Bihanaira Ashaloy Arusu? So say you give it to the father of the girl that wasn't engaged? <clears throat> well, well who, what's the problem she got engaged? Why shouldn't it go to the father? So on that Samechi answers, what do you mean? How the time just will end up right? So Bala Banis is once the woman was raped. Then she gets married. La Atma, the Knas now goes to her. Mixib and Naslan Bihana Ashaloy Nasu. So say you give it to the father of the girl that wasn't married? So what do you bring me a riot? So he responds back, he says, no, what do you hachash, how can you compare the two? Hasm over there, hoi lebagres meitzi mishos avdir, since, meaning, uh, regarding the case of Nesuit, since we know when a girl becomes a begettis, when she becomes 12 and a half, that removes her from her father's domain, we don't find the Torah having any rights of a father and his daughter, only to sell her when she's a minor. And all other benefits, like for example, her knas and her handiwork, whatever she earns, that's when she's a naira, as the Gemara learns out later on the Memba Mbe. But Bagris, when she's a, a, an adult, let's say over age 12 and a half, that we don't find the father having any rights. And since the father didn't give any rights, where should we think to say that he she has any rights now? So therefore, when she becomes 12 and a half, that's it. She takes everything that's owed, it goes to her. Ah, so when they soon meet him, and marriage also removes the girl from the father's domain, as we find by him nullifying her vows, as long as she doesn't get married, her father can nullify it. When she gets married, the father cannot nullify anymore. Okay, so we should compare the two. Ma Bagris, just like when a girl turns 12 and a half, Bo Lehom, if someone had raped her when she was a Naira, U Bagran, she becomes a Begadis La Atzmo, it goes to herself, because the Pasuk says, Venoshna Ish Hashaykh Bimo La Vihanara, the man who laid with her gives to the father of the Naira, which is if she's a Naira at the time of the Venoshna of Bishast and Nesina, but if she's a Begadis, no, it doesn't go to the father, it goes to her. Oh, okay, so after Nisan, so to marriage. Bo Lehom, this is, that's what the Bryce means, if, if he was born, and then she gets married, last one goes to herself. But in the ears, and what are you comparing to getting engaged? Miko Mafka Mershus Dabagami, you think getting engaged removed the girl totally from her father's domain? No, it's not true. Hatna will learn the Mishnah Besef in the Dunham. That says, Naida Marasam, a girl that's engaged. Halacha is, Uvia Ubaila Mafilo Nadida. Her father and her husband together nullify her vow, meaning it's not nullified until both of them nullified. So therefore, you can't prove to me from the halacha of Nisis. Of Arsa. Yeah, by Nisus, when she was violated and then she gets married, it's going to go to her because you're not in her father's domain, just like making Bagras. But by getting engaged, she's still in her father's domain. The father still has to be a partner in the nullification of a vow. 
So therefore, we wouldn't be able to prove that question of Baal Lev and this Ar Samahu. We don't know, would it be going to herself or would it be going to the father? It's possible it would still be going to the father because she's not totally removed from her father's domain. Let me talk about the next Mishnah, continuing on this theme of Oynes, we said, and now we're contrasting that with Mephata. Up until now, when Elon and Iris were talking about the girls that were violated regarding the Knas, now we say we're going to grow who is seduced. So the parish of the Torah has two types of situations where a man violates a girl, either by force or by seduction, which basically means to say that you convince her to have, to have this relationship. And that is, there's a, a discrepancy. The Mishnah says, Mephata, if someone seduces a girl, nice and shalashan he has to give her three payments. Well, is our boss, and if you rate four payments, what are they? So the Mishnah explains, Mephata, nice and boishas, if someone seduces a girl, he has to give her the shame, upagam, and the deficiency, which the Mishnah later on is going to explain exactly what these are. Uknas, and the biblical penalty of 50 silver coins. Now, might have uh, regarding rape, you have to add on one more, you have to give the pain of, the, what, of their experience. Now, moreover, the Mishnah says, what are the differences between Aynas and Mephata? So the Mishnah goes through a list of different differences. So first of all, Aynas Nishan is a tzar. Like we said, the rapist has to give for pain, but Mephata Aynas is a tzar, doesn't have to give for the pain. Second of all, Aynas Nishan is a the rapist has to give right away to the father, even if he ends up marrying her. But the, this, the, the one who seduces only when he divorces her. So the Gemara is going to ask, what do you mean? Divorces, you think he's married to her? So the Gemara explains, it means the same meaning if he never ends up marrying her. Because if he marries her, he actually does not have to give the kadas. Because it says in the Pasuk, and he has to give her that amount of money. And if he refuses, then so it's only if he refuses. But regarding Aynas, it says, no. First it says, First it says to give the money. And then simply see Leisha. So there you have to give the money right away. So that's another difference between Aynas and Mephata. Third of all, Aynas trace about Tzitzay. The rapist has to drink from the, from the cup that he chose to drink from. In other words, he has to marry her. Like it says, he can never send her ever away. But the one who seduces, if he wants to let her go, he could let her go. Says the Mishnah, Kate's the choice of Batsitza. What does it mean that the rapist has to drink from his cup? It means that's something he can get. If he rapes a girl, even if she's lame, if she's, she can't walk, I feel like maybe she's blind, I feel like even if she's full with, uh, with, with, with boils, it doesn't make a difference. This is the cup you chose, you chose to violate this girl, now you're going to marry her. Now, but Ninsa, but Ve'erva, let's say it turns out that she's a, a, a biblically forbidden relationship to him, or she's in the root of Israel, or she's not fit to join the Jewish people. Then in Yerushalayim, then he's not allowed to remain married to her. I'm like it says in the Bible, the bottom of Malaysi Leisha, the woman that he's Ma'anis, for him should be a wife, which is Isha Lerula has to be a woman that's fit for him, and not one that's, that's forbidden. Now, now the Gemara asks, one of the differences is, we said between Tsar and Oynes uh, Mafata is the halacha of Tsar. So the Gemara asks, Tsar Demai, what's the pain by a rape? So Taisus brings in the re, says, what's the Gemara's question? Doesn't the Gemara know that the first time a girl has via there's a lot of pain, and many young girls become sick from this. And if you're going to say that that pain was obvious to the Gemara, that you can be popular, why? Because what is the rapist doing to the girl? She's going to have that pain anyway when she gets married. And there's many Tanoim in Baba Kamad of Nantes that hold. We're not concerned for something that you anyway is going to have. I'm not, you're not going to be liable for something. Even if you're causing someone pain, you're going to have the pain anyway. So why should I be high for that pain? So, so, uh, so what's the Gemara's question of, of, um, of which pain is it? So the Ri says, no, the Tsar of the Bia, the first Bia, because of the desire for intimacy, it actually doesn't happen at the time of the intimacy. The, the pain is actually only afterwards. But the entire pain of the wound that you can be chayev, is the tzar that's coming at the time of the chaval. But what happens after that, you're actually part because that's a grum of the alma. That's what the Gemara is asking, which tzar? It the can't be the tzar. Pain. The emotional pain is not positive? Emotional pain, I hear it means psychological trauma. Yeah, I know it doesn't deal with that. I hear it. No, but there's nowhere in the Torah. What is tzar? Tzar, how do you measure tzar? Physical? No, it's ripping. What's ripping is healing. Yeah, but how, how can you make 
Physical. How can you measure physical? There's no right. emotional connection. Yeah. No, how do you measure right. physical? Bush is emotional. Bush is emotional. Bush Only by, how do you by measure it? Oh, all, all type of damages is bushes. Where? Yeah. Anytime you hurt somebody. Yeah, so you have to know. Anytime you want the tzad that the Gemara is trying to find. If it's a tzad of, of emotional pain. Is it emotional pain? Somebody smacks somebody. Maybe it's not. Maybe not every person has emotional pain. I didn't think so. Yeah, you have to know. Our Kapanim taste is saying it's not the Tsar, the Etzim, Bi or Rishayna, because he says that the, the Taibiyab for the Tashmish overrides it. You don't feel the pain when you're having it, but it's afterwards that it hurts. After, it's a Grama Balma. So that the Gemara Kana couldn't say was what the Tsar was. So the Gemara is trying to figure out what's the Tsar of the, of the, of the rape. Some of Buddhism says, I'll tell you what, Tsar Shachat Pagabekarka, the Tsar, the pain when he throws her on the ground. He pushes the girl down, that's the tzad. So Moscow of Zir Zir says, well, I, I don't understand. I mean, if that's the case, it's very circumstantial. Let's say he throws it down on silk. So what, uh, he's going to be exempt from, from, from the tzad? I mean, what, because if she wasn't throw, he was thrown on the cushion. So Chitim HaKadami begin to say, yes, maybe then there's no tzad. <coughs> he's not violent then. But then we'll learn the price. It says, the uh, is going to make a deal. He says, no, in the He says, no, it's not true. A rapist doesn't have to pay for pain versus that of Mafati. You know why? He says, She said, well, start having this bottle. She's gonna end up having this pain anyways when she's married to her husband. So because he did it first, he has to pay for the tzah? No. Which I'm like the sage has said to him, what are you talking about? In a day when the bell is buying this, yes, she can have pain the first time she has it with her, for her virginity when she gets married, but you cannot compare the bell is this when it's happening through force, the Nevelas Baratz, when he's doing willingly. Now, as Rashi explains, the most question is, if you're telling me the Tsar is because he throws her on the ground, you gotta hope the husband he's ma- she's marrying and not throwing her on the ground the night of the Chazna. So what's he saying? Oh, yeah, she's gonna have this anyway when she gets married. Have what? You can throw them to the ground? Now, obviously, it cannot be what the Tsar is. So, El Abar Benachem Ahmed Abarabu says, the Tsar is shall pisa kuriglai. This opening up of the legs that is the pain that you have by the oinus. And that's what he's saying. She's having by a husband anyway. And they tell her, look, she's going to have that when she gets married. It's not going to be the same when he forces it open versus, versus when it's the, being done with the husband. You see this concept in the Pasuk where they're comparing because they were doing sins. They're comparing them to like a zaina. So, that they separate your legs for any passerby. And like it says, and you increase your znus. So this, you see this, the concept of the opening of the legs? That's painful. You must say, So then why are you saying that Mafuta doesn't have tsar? Her legs are also open. He says, nah, most of the Mafuta, what could you compare a woman who's seduced? What could you compare it to? Someone says to his friend, I want you to tear my cloths, and you'll be exempt. So in other words, He's saying, you're right, Be'etzin, truth is, Mefuta has the pain of the piece of the life. But she's saying, do it. She's saying, do it, I want, I want this. She's seduced, she's on board. So it's like someone saying, yeah, tear my clothing, of course it's painful. But, and then you could be off the hook. So that's why you're not high for it. So it's like, what? Shali? She's saying, tear my clothing? And then you'd be off the hook, Davun, and it's the father's. As the Gemara tells us later on, all the benefits that a girl gets go to her father. So how could she be Michael saying, tear my clothing? It's not my clothing. My parents bought me this, this old couture, these fancy, you know, glasses. Say, break my glasses. What do you break my glasses? My mother is going to hit you in the head. What do you mean? You can't go ahead and be Michael. How, how is that possible? So Elam Ram Nachum and Rambabu says a different answer. <coughs> the intelligent women amongst them say, I'm a futa in tzar. A woman who's seduced doesn't have pain for her legs being opened. It's a different type of opening. So therefore, that's why there's no tzar. I book chazim disla. I we see that it is painful for her. So abaya, it's amaliyim. My mother said it's kamay chamimi. It's like hot water, warm water. I'll reach the karcha on the per- bold person's head. That is not so painful. It, yeah, you feel it. And you're going to the hot shower and you feel some of that, you know, on the bold head. But it's not nishkeferlof. Rav Ami says, "Amoli basra of Chizda, the daughter of Chizda, who was the wife of Rav." Interesting, he's saying the daughter of Chizda. 
said to me, you know, it's kirivde, it's like, it's like a puncture, the chasilta of the lancet from the blood letter. It's like a little pinch. That's all. A papa, he says, Amelie Bas Abbasura, the daughter of Abbasura, which was the wife of a papa, they're all saying their father in law's uh, daughter. Ki na akusha. It's like hard bread, pechimchi, that's scraping on the palate. So, yeah, you feel it, but it's, uh, it's not keferlet. It's not, it's, not, it's not enough significant to be considered as tsar. And that's what we're saying that the oinus is going to have tsar because the opening of the legs is very painful for because it's being forced. But it's not, the, it's not so keferlet, and never there's no tsar. Now, another difference the Mishnah said was is that ho'inus needs to be yad. Uh, the rapist has to give his 50 silver coins right away, no matter what happens. So Mafat likshayetz b'chulu, but Mafat, if he, if he divorces her, then he has to give the coins. The Gemara says, what likshayetz? We already addressed this in Rashi and the Mishnah. Well, what, when he divorces her? What, ishtahi? What, she's his wife? What, you, you're saying that, that when he divorces her, as if he's married? Omar Bayi says, no, Ema, what I mean to say is likshayetz. It means, if he's not going to marry, meaning the girl or her father or the Mafat himself is going to refuse the marriage, then he has to give 50 silver coins. Because if not, he actually wouldn't have to give it. Tanya Nam Hok, similar in the price. Api although they said him about the Nisan Likshayichnais, although, and this is the point we're trying to bring out, although by the seductive, the, he, we said he only gives the 50 silver coins when he doesn't marry her. And that's what we're saying. I mean, Likshayichnais means if he's not going to marry her. But the contrast is, but her shame and her the, 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 the deficiency, that you give right away. Well, it's going to. Right. Now, yeah. right. But right, you contrast that with, with uh, no, it actually says, uh, um, yeah. Right, so that's right. Mafat is different than Aynus. Right. The Echad of Aynus, the Echad Mafat. Now, whether it be a case of Aynus and Mafat, whether her or her father could stop him from marrying her. So the Gemara explains this. Bishlam and Mafuta, because we understand by Mafuta when she was seduced, the Pasad and Shemalis, in Moin Yemoin Nabi, if her father refuses, now, in Leil Abbey, I would only know that the father could refuse. He asked me, how do we know that she herself could also refuse? The Mala says, the Pasad Yemoin, which is Mikal Makim, which place explains they could say Moin Yemoin, says Moin Yemoin, they learn actually two different things in this Pasad. But our component, we have a special Rebuy to learn how she also could refuse. Although Ainus, but regarding the case of Ainus, I understand the girl herself, she can refuse to have to marry her rapist. Because says, to her should be. Now, Sia sounds like she's Mahava herself to him. It's, 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 it's a feminine. Beloyim to him, see, yes, she should be, meaning she's doing Medaita willingly. So, which, which you see, she can refuse. But regarding the father, how do we know that he could refuse? So, Mabai says, that's a smart. We don't want the sin of the game. Meaning, up until now, the girl was in her father's domain. The father was able to choose who she's getting married to. Now you, by raping the daughter, you're going to go get now, decide you're marrying her now? No, he could refuse her because we don't want the sinner to gain. Say, now he got a wife. He just get prey and this, you get to marry someone. No. Rabbi Mitzvah says a different shot. He says, Kabo What's the Kabo Chayim? Umama Fatim, the case of Mavata Shlil, Ovi Aladas, Abiyu Bavad. That the rapist is only violating the father's consciousness because the girl is doing it consensually. It's only the father who is being um, being violated, essentially. So, and still we say that both her and the father could refuse, as we found from the Pussy. So, so when she's violated, where not only is he being, it's going against what he wants, but it's going against what she wants. The question isn't a little more so that for sure both of them could be ma'akim and hold back this ma'anis, this um, a person from being able to uh, marry this girl. Now, the Gemara says, why did they need different shalom? So, Rebbe Lohim Kabbai, he didn't say like a baya because Kibli Kumasham Knas, since the, the rapist is giving, he's giving a penalty, you can't say that if the father can't refuse, that the sin is gaining. He's paying get the guilt, he's paying 50 silver coins. So, he didn't like that svar. Abayi Lama Karabba, Abayi did not say like Rabba, because he held this actually not a Kamal Chaim. Why? Because Mefata, yeah, the Ihu, the Mefata himself, Motsi Ma'akim, he could go ahead and stop the marriage. If he wants, he doesn't have to marry her, like the Gemara says later on, Yimudendu Loi, it's dependent on him, on the masculine. 
it's with his agreement. So the could stop it. So we understand the body could also stop it. But by Aidis, the Yule Matzabakim, the Ma'anis cannot hold back. He has to marry her. So if you're not a Lema Tzabakim, maybe the father also cannot hold back. Unless with the Svar, of Shleif it in this girl. And that's what he doesn't say, like Rav. Tanya, uh, we learned another verse, so continue on this theme. Avkish Omer, though they said, Oyinus Neis Biyad, that the Ma'anis has to give, when he has to pay Kanazi, he has to give it right away. Kishayetzi Hu, when he divorces her, Ain Lo Love Klum. She has nothing on her. Meaning, what does that mean? Suresh explains. You don't say that, oh, the knas does not take the place of a kshuba, because that you gave to the father right away. No, we don't say that. We say the monies that he gave her for the knas, that he raped her and then he has to marry her, that's her ksuba. And so too, if he dies, the monies of her knas will be as payment for her ksuba. <laughs> so first thing Gemara wonders on the words. The words don't read. Kishayitzi, when he divorces her, Mimotzi Mapula, could he divorce her? I thought it says in the puzzle, Yuchul Shal Chukoyoma. So the Gemara says, Eman O say, what we meant to say was, Kishatay Tzayhi. When she is leaving on her own, and she's like, I want a divorce. Okay, if she wants to get a divorce, well, I can't send you away, you want to get a divorce. Then Eman love Klum. Then she has no rights on him because you already got your Korn Kuk Suba with the Kanas monies. We give right away. Now the price it concludes. What? Well, what, 50 silver coins, right? I mean, that's the same amount for what? Right, I'm saying but this, is, this is the ksuba of the, um, of the case of Ma'anas, is, 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 is actually Kamoyhara Basulis, like actually we say that's, uh, that's actually one of the sources that if the ksuba is biblical, it's actually from Kamoyhara, it's actually from this parasha itself. So yeah, that's the, that's the ksuba over here. Now, the verse ends, Mace, if the Ma'anas dies, so Yatsa Kesed Knas of Ksuba. So, so here also, uh, Almana gets a Ksuba. And she's not getting because her, her Knas money is her Ksuba. I mean, he says, no, Yesha Ksuba man. That no, she does get a Ksuba of a hundred, like the way uh, Baula gets. She's going to get a Ksuba of a hundred. So Zimar Mike, what are they disagreeing about? So Zimar explains. Rabban Zabad, Rabban hold. Time and might take in Rabban Ksuba. Why did Rabban institute a Ksuba for other women? Let's say we know that. They, we don't want it to be easy. You know what? Get out. You know, forget it. Just leave. You didn't. You didn't make supper. Uh, uh, out of here. It shouldn't be easy for him to get rid of her because you, know, you got to pay up a few, a few thousand dollars. Like, okay, you know, think twice about it. <laughs> he can't divorce her. So what's the point of having a ksuba? So they held. You don't have to have a ksuba because he can't divorce her anyway. The reason we heard this, will be held. No, it's not true. You have to make sure he has a ksuba. At least of that of a, a bula which she was because he was he was ma'anasa. Because Hanam Mitzar, because you know what's going to happen is, if she doesn't have a ksuba, he's going to make life very difficult for her. At the Amr she's going to say, Let me look, I don't want you anymore. Okay, good, get out. So we, we want to make sure she has a ksuba because, or else he's going to create a situation where he gets her out. So we want to make sure that it's, it's a deterrent. So it, it would make sense, even if he cannot divorce us and she could leave, we want to make sure that there's a ksuba. Now, the Mishnah had said, Another one of the differences, Oynus Shaysa Batsitsa. That the Oynus, the Ma'anus has to drink from his cup. Whereas the Mafata, not necessarily, he doesn't have to marry her. Now, Amalei Rav Mephazak Ravashi says, Mefti, let's see. Migmer Gamri Mabdali. We learn out Oynus from Mafata, then it's Shkolem. We learn the Mafata from Oynus, then it's 50. So the Gemara asks if we continue to have a memory of, maybe then Loham Mil Sanami. Maybe for this also, that a Mafata should have to marry forcibly. Maybe she'll learn that from Oynus also, just like Oynus has to drink from his cup, maybe Oynus also has to drink. And then the says, by my father, no, it says, that the, the, the money he has to give is, he has to take her for him as a wife. What do you mean? What's the word loy? It's just saying, what's loy? Loy means it means for him, meaning what his conscience is, what his agreement. He has to agree to it. Therefore, you see that by that of the Mephatim, is different than that of the Ma'anas. Now the Mishnah also said, what, what's considered drinking from his cup? So he said, yeah, even if she's, uh, she's uh, lame and she's, she's blind, all these things, you did this, you chose this, you, got this, you made the bed, you sleep in it. Now, whereas he said, if she's an erva, then, then that's not appropriate because it's, it's not going to be Malaysia Leisha. Now, on that, the Gemara asked, 
says Amikul Shmaiti commit the Bzimna Da. I said over the teaching of the Bzimna Da. And I asked, Nasi, I say, let the positive commandment of Laisi Leisha come along with Nitcha Laisa say, and override the negative prohibition that she's not fit to come into the Jewish people like the Mamzeres, which Rashi and Tesis both seem to be saying that, not Erva, but upon them that of like a Mamzeres, or like the Tesis says, of that of the other types of women that are not fit, but be fit as it may. But Laisi Leisha is a positive commandment to marry the woman that he violated. So let it be a classic, I say, the Chalaisa say, of the negative prohibition of marrying this forbidden woman. On that, Amalie said to me, no. Hey, Chamin, and they said, say, but the said, where do we say a positive commandment overrides a negative prohibition? Which is a wonder why I picked that case. In all cases, it's actually a different type of a case. But I'll compare them. When there's a Tsaras on the, on the Erva, on the, on the, on the Git, on the, uh, the Mok and Mila, so the halacha is that you you do a circumcision, even though you, there's a prohibition of getting rid of saras from a body, not only get rid of it. So why would they do say say dechalisa? Because like after like you say it's not possible not to do the positive commandment. You have to do the mitzvah mila, and that's the only way to do it. So then you say say dechalisa. But here, if the girl says I don't want this marriage, is the positive commandment here at all? So as Rashi explains here, also we teach her to say I don't want it because that's what's called efshel kaim shnei. If I said the is only to know the way. Here there is a way not to violate the loyalists here marrying this this mamzeres. She says I don't want it. Oh, okay, and therefore that's the case. So therefore that's why we don't say I said the Thank you for any time.